My name is Louis Aldawi, and I'm a consultant hematologist at Rotherham Hospital in the UK. Today we are going to do a quick morphology review of the blood film. Which part of the blood film should you look at? To the right, this is a thin part of the blood film where red blood cells are spaced apart and there is no preservation of central pallor. Don't look here. To the left, this is a thick part of the blood film where the red blood cells are overlapping each other. Don't look there as well. In the middle, that's the center of the blood film, you can see a good preservation of central pallor and you would allow some degree of overlapping of red blood cells. This is the area we usually look at. We will start by doing a quick review of the white blood cell morphology. We will review the normal white blood cells in the blood film and we will show you how to identify immature white blood cells and reactive lymphocytes. White blood cells are divided into granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes are typically neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Agranulocytes are divided into lymphocytes and monocytes. Neutrophil. Before we start talking about neutrophil, we need to give a background about staining. Why do red blood cells stain red and the nucleus of all white blood cells stain blue? And the answer is, what right gimsa stain is the most widely used stain. It has eosine which stains basic materials red and it has got methylene blue which stains acidic material blue. The nucleus of white blood cells will have lots of nucleic acids and therefore it is acidic and it will stain blue. Now why the neutrophils are called neutrophils? Because they have got these tiny little granules and they have neutral staining which means they stain between red and blue. The easiest way to look at a neutrophil is by looking at the nucleus. This nucleus here will have two or three lobes and can be in different shapes and that's why it is sometimes called polymorphonuclear cell. Eosinophils are easily recognizable cells. They have large red granules and the nucleus is almost always obscured by the granules. Basophils are rare. They have large purple granules. Lymphocyte is same size as a red blood cell. It is almost nucleus with a very tiny rim of cytoplasm. Monocyte is a large cell. It has large nucleus and large cytoplasm. It is three times as large as a lymphocyte or red blood cell. It has this indentation. You don't really have to have the typical horse show shaped monocyte to call it a monocyte. Just an indentation is enough. Now we will talk about immature white blood cells. This picture from bone marrow and you can see the big cells here to the top with high nucleocytoplasmic ratio and visible nuclei. These are blasts. As the cell matures the nucleus gets smaller and the next stage in maturation is promyelocyte. You can see clearly to the left a promyelocyte with apparent Golgi apparatus, which we call zone of half. All cells which make a lot of proteins, like white blood cells, they need to do a lot of lysosomal enzymes, and plasma cells, which do a lot of antibodies, they have prominent zone of half. So a bromylocyte can undergo mitosis, same as blast, and that's why you get acute leukemia involving the plast, acute leukemia involving the promyelocyte. And the next stage in maturation is a myelocyte where you typically have a cell with half nucleus, half cytoplasm. Some morphologists will differentiate between early myelocyte where you still have the zone of half and late myelocyte where you don't have the zone of half. Then the cell starts to indent and this is 
and metamylocyte and then it becomes folded and this is a band and then it becomes segmented which is a segmented neutrophil we don't have acute leukemia involving the band the segment the metamylocyte or even the myelocyte and the reason for that because these cells especially the segments bands and metamylocytes don't undergo mitosis they only mature and that's why we get chronic leukemias when these cells are involved for myelocytes they can still undergo mitosis but the majority of myelocytes will under will not undergo mitosis they will mature now we will study each of these cells as they appear in the blood film and we need to be able to recognize them for example this cell the nucleus is clearly more than 50 percent the volume of the cell and has prominent zone of half this is typical promyelocyte it's really very important to recognize this cell because patients may present with acute myelostic leukemia with lots of promyelocyte in the blood film and urgent treatment with atra may save life next cell is myelocyte with half nucleus half cytoplasm you can see some indentation so it's not wrong if you call it metamyelocyte as well the next cell is eosinophilic myelocyte you can see clearly that the cell is maturing and how we identify that because the nucleus is getting smaller so it's on its way to becoming eosinophilic metamyelocyte this is a band and this is a reactive lymphocyte typically reactive lymphocytes are hugged by red blood cells and the cytoplasm at the rim gets darker that's an easy way to recognize it from immature cells or plasts where they tend to keep distance from red blood cells this is not a hard rule but sometimes it is helpful this is again another reactive lymphocyte hugged by red blood cells with lots of cytoplasm now we're going to talk about red cell morphology and we'll talk about abnormalities in staining size shape and inclusions abnormal staining involves hypochromia target cells or sometimes called leptocytes stomatocytes and spherocytes in this blood film you can see in the middle a lymphocyte and the red blood cells around it are quite smaller so this is a case of microcytic anemia and you can see that the rim of hemoglobin is less than two thirds of the red blood cell so it's clearly hypochromic this was a case of severe iron deficiency anemia with microcytic hypochromic features this case you can also see severe microcytic hypochromic anemia and you can see target cells in this context target cells usually not specific but in the context of severe hypochromia and microcytosis target cells trigger the diagnosis of thalassemia this was a case of hemoglobin H where three genes are knocked out and you have excess beta chains in this case you can see two population of red blood cells one is hypochromic and one is normochromic this is dimorphic blood picture and this was a case of transfused iron deficiency anemia in this blood film you can see stomatocytes they look like a mouse and they can be artifactual but they can be found in liver disease you can see target cells also mainly found in liver disease and can be artifactual as well now we'll talk about spherocytes spherocytes are red blood cells which lost their pican cavity they become smaller than red blood cell they don't have central pallor and they, they, they stain deeper or darker 
because of their spheroidal nature. Spherocytes are found in hereditary spherocytosis or autoimmune hemolytic anemia. But if you ruled out these two diseases, then spherocytes can commonly be found in splenectomy. So the first thing you do when you find spherocytes, you need to look and exclude how will jolly bodies found in these slides to the top here. How will jolly bodies are fragments of nucleus left over from red cell production. Patients who don't have a spleen, these are usually taken out by spleen and patients who don't have a spleen will still have this remnants and we call them Howell jolly bodies. Also you get the speculated red blood cells. This will make you think toward splenectomy and if the patient didn't have splenectomy then you think about functional hyposplenism. In this part of the world, in the UK, the most common cause of functional hyposplenism is celiac disease. 10% of patients with celiac disease will have functional hyposplenism. If you go to the Middle East, for example, it is sickle cell anemia, where patients infarct their spleen and they get functional hyposplenism. Now we'll talk about abnormal size, microcytes, and spherocytes were already covered. Now we talk about ranked, round macrocytes and oval macrocytes. The oval big macrocytes are typically found in B12, folate deficiency, and cytotoxic drugs, like hydroxycarbamide, for example. The red blood cell, the MCV, can be above 120, 130, while in case of liver disease or alcoholism, which is the most common cause of macrocytosis, the MCV will be in the range of 100 to 110. It will rarely be above 120. This is a case where the lab result will show high MCV, but it's a false result. This is a case of cold agglutination. The red blood cells are stacking to each other. And in this case, what you need to do, you need to warm the blood sample and analyze it again. And then you get the normal MCV. This one is a case of Rolo formation in patients with high protein like pregnancy and multiple myeloma. The red blood cells are stacking upon each other, but this is a blood film phenomena, so you don't get a high MCV in this case. Now this is another case with dimorphic blood picture. You can easily see hypochromic red blood cells and normochromic red blood cells. And in the middle, you can see a siderocyte. If you stain it with iron, you could see the iron deposits in the mitochondria. This was a case of sideroplastic anemia. So every time you see dimorphic blood picture, you need to think about sideroplastic anemia if the patient was not transfused. Thanks for your attention.